Ahoy there, geeks and nerds. What's going on? I hope you're all doing well and safe. My name is Ryan, and you're watching Stacked Up. In this video, I'd like to talk about pen testing with Galva Linux. Let me just inform you that I'm not in any way a professional pen tester, neither am I a network administrator. I just find that the subject pen testing is quite an interesting topic to talk about. That's why I'm reading up on it, and in this video, I'm gonna summarize the things that I've learned about pen testing with Kali Linux and there's a lot of things to cover and I can't fit them all in one video so this is gonna be a series of videos and this is going to be the part one of that series. So what is pen testing? Well pen testing is short for penetration testing and according to Cisco.com uh, Pen testing is a cyber attack simulation launched on your computer system. The simulation helps discover points of exploitation and test IT breach security. It also says it's synonymous with ethical hacking. So, pen testing an organization is the same as ethically hacking an organization to discover security issues. Now that we know what pen testing is, we would like to know what is what it is not. Well, it says that it is not the same as vulnerability assessments because vulnerability assessment is primarily only a scan and evaluation of security. However, a pen test simulates a cyber attack and exploits discovered vulnerabilities. Wow, that sounds awesome. Moving on, now there are other free security auditing system operating systems out there that are available for pen testing like Pirate OS or Part Security OS, Black Arch, and Cyborg Linux, just to cite a few. However, I'm going to be focused on Kali Linux, which is, by the way, formerly known as Backtrack because I'm already much much more familiar with it and already I already have working knowledge on how to use it and all I have to do now is to develop it much further although I'm open to learning those that I've mentioned given the time so the first thing that I did was to download a copy of a 32-bit virtual box image of Kali Linux from Kali.org and over here I clicked on the download button and selected virtual machines and then I clicked on the 32-bit tab and downloaded the torrent file they have provided and opened it with transmission this application right here for Windows users out there, if I'm not making any sense, well, then let me explain to you what is happening here. I'm currently on an Ubuntu machine. What that means is that the computer that I'm currently on is running Ubuntu as its operating system. Ubuntu, by the way, is a flavor of the GNU slash Linux operating system, and it's a free and open source OS that you can download and install on your computer as well. On the Kali Linux side of things, what I did was instead of downloading a live CD, which is the image that is flashed on a USB drive if you intend to install Kali on your computer, I have instead downloaded a 32 bit virtual box image because I intend to run Kali on a virtual box. VirtualBox is a free and open source virtualization software by Oracle Corporation. It allows users to run nearly any operating system on a single machine and to freely switch between operating system instances running simultaneously. Now there are many tutorials out there on the internet and on YouTube on how to install and set up VirtualBox on your computer so I'm not going to go over them anymore. Alright, so moving on, going back to the Kali virtual box image. I have already downloaded the 
I've already downloaded the image from here and I have also installed it on my virtual box. I have installed it on my virtual box by using the input appliance on the file menu and then um, selecting the OVF file that I've downloaded. Uh, it's the one that has the OVA, it's the one that has a .OVA file name extension. Now all I have to do since I have already had my virtual box open is to fire up Kali by selecting it and clicking start. Now that I have uh, successfully booted Kelly, I can now log in with the username Kelly and password Kelly. <laughs> Clicking on the start menu right here, we can see that Kelly contains a plethora of forensic and pen testing tools already pre installed for us. So at times, it can be a daunting task finding our way around them. The key here is, of course, familiarization. So you're going to make sure you familiarize yourself with the available tools and their, categor and their categories. Aside from that, I also learned that if I want to master Kali Linux, then I should be at ease with a generic Linux system. That means I have to be proficient in Linux for me to be a good pen tester because a large percentage of web, email, and other internet services runs on Linux servers. Yeah. So what do I expect in learning pen testing with Kali? Of course, I expect that most of the time I'll be working on the terminal or the command line. By command line, I mean a text-based interface that allows you to enter commands such as this one execute them and view the results so how to get a command line when your system is working properly the easiest way to access the command line is to run a terminal in your graphical desktop session which is this thing right here Alright, so if you have any comments or suggestions, please let me know down in the comments. That is going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider clicking the subscribe button. And in part 2 of this series, I'm going to be showing you some tips and tricks that I've learned to find my way around Kali that helped me get up and running quickly. Until next time, I'm out of here.